Wow. Wow. Okay. Oh, we're getting purple. Purple. Oh, this is sick. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Aurora Borealis. And today, I'm going to show you how to shoot it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what even is the Aurora? Well, the ancient Swedes, the Swedish forefathers believed the lights to be a gift from the benevolent gods, providing light and warmth in the form of a volcano up in the north. The Norwegians, however, way more angsty. They believed the lights to be a reflection of Valkyrie's armor, a goddess who would come and carry fallen soldiers from the battlefield up into Valhalla via the Bifrost Bridge. Okay, so this one's my favorite. The Finnish people actually believed that the lights were caused by a firefox who ran so quickly across the snow that it, its tail caused sparks to fly into the night sky, creating the aurora. These are all very, very beautiful and very colorful explanations, but we know that not to be true now. The northern lights are actually caused by solar activity. Solar storms on our star surface give out huge clouds of electrically charged particles that interact with our electromagnetic field, creating the beautiful light that you see above. Now it's very rare, almost impossible to see this far down south in London, so I have to pack my bags and fly to Finland in order to create this. So let's go see what we can find in Finland. <laughs> Welcome to okay, so we just arrived in the Arctic Circle, the most optimum location for seeing the Northern Lights. The first thing you need to know is, because the Northern Lights are so unpredictable, it's gonna take a lot of patience. This is not our first time trying to get this thing. We were, a couple of nights ago, we were running around Drukaku, so we were trying to see where the Northern Lights, as soon as we got our gear out of the bag, nothing to see. So you have to be patient. You just have to sit tight and be patient. Okay, next thing is you need to be ready to move on the fly. Depending on what the aurora forecast is, it can turn out that the lights are actually going off in a town 45 minutes away from where you are. So being able to be mobile and flexible with location gives you a higher chance of getting to see the lights. Okay, so another thing you need to know is that you really can't be upset if you're not able to get your shots on the first try. We tried maybe four times, maybe five times over the course of a five day period and we just not, we just couldn't get lucky for some reason. We just couldn't get lucky. Yo boys, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> Packing up again to go shoot Northern Lights for the, what is this, 10th time? It's a lot of times. It's a lot tried. of times. Hopefully we get lucky this time. I, I'm not feeling optimistic if I'm being honest, but hey, it's the, it's the thought that counts. And take note that it's, it's freezing cold, you know, sub-zero temperatures. It, it takes hours and hours of driving to leave your hotel or leave your Airbnb in order to get to a place where um, hopefully you get lucky and you're able to see the Aurora and then there's so much fatigue, you've just spent a whole day shooting some other stuff. You gotta keep trying and trying and trying. Just don't give up, eventually you'll get that shot and it'll be, it'll be so worth it. Okay, so another tip here, something you need to know is you need a bunch of apps in order to find out where the Aurora will be. There's, there's this app, there's this app called the Aurora Tracker. If you just search on your phone in the App Store, Aurora, it'll, it'll be the first app that pops up. It tells you exactly where it's gonna be popping that night. That's the app that I used to, you know, make, make the Aurora hunts happen at night and increase my possibility of finding Aurora. Secondly, another thing you can do is try and get star trackers. Star trackers will let you know where the moon is gonna be in the sky, at what time the moon is gonna set, at what time the moon is gonna rise, depending on what kind of shot you want. You need the Aurora Tracker, you need a Sky Tracker. You also need a tripod, of course, of course, because you can't do long exposures, very still long exposures without a tripod. And of course, you need a camera with a very good sensor and a lens that's very fast in order to make it happen. Now, another set of things that I don't think a lot of photographers would mention is warm gear. It's very, very important for you to have wool sweaters. As a matter of fact, let me show you how I dress up every single time uh, I go out shooting the Aurora. First off, I get a base layer of warmth, then I get another layer that, to go over the base layer just to insulate myself even more. I get a sweatshirt on top of that, snowboarding pants, jacket, gloves, just in order to maintain a very, very warm level because without this, you won't be able to concentrate on the shot that you're trying to get and you'll be distracted by how uncomfortably cold it is because in these locations, it's freezing, it's cold. Your settings. What settings do I use when I have to shoot the Aurora. First things first, try and boost the ISO as high as you can go. Wait, like this? Don't. don't like this? Like this? Why would you do that? Why would you do? Why would you do that? 
<laughs> I can see the br it's bright. Isn't it bright? Like that. <laughs> Stop! Stop. You boost it as high as it can go without clipping the whites, without getting unnecessary noise like this guy. And then also try and boost your aperture as high as it goes because unfortunately lenses don't go to 0.00. .00. So you boost your aperture as high as it goes, you boost your ISO as high as you can manage the noise, and then you dial your shutter speed to balance the both of the others. I, I can tell you what my settings are. My shutter speed right now is uh, two seconds. So I'm shooting a photo every two seconds. My aperture is at 2.8 because I'm shooting with it with the L lens by Canon. And then my ISO is around 3,500. So the first thing I figured out was I figured out my ISO. I don't want to go above 4,000. I think I'm going to stick to 2,500. 3,000 is a sweet spot. Boom. Okay, my aperture, obviously my lens doesn't go as fast as I want it to go. It goes at 2.8. So I'm going to stop at 2.8. And then I'll, I just dialed in my shutter speed to match the others to see what the others look like. So that's what your settings are going to be. I know this is kind of um, disappointing. Everyone likes to know the exact settings that they need in order to get their photos to look like that, but you just have to play around, play around. And finally, probably the most important tip that you need to know that is valuable in all action photography when it comes to Aurora, anything, is you need to use a timer. Every single time you push the shutter button, it shakes the camera. So I use, a, I put a 10 second timer on there. I just click it, step back, let the camera do its thing, you know, just relax and then the result comes out nice and crisp. However, if you're shooting by yourself, trying to click the button as hard as you can, you're not necessarily gonna get the results that you want. And I know you guys are trying to get some bangers. I'm out here for you. My favorite method is to set up a time lapse, get it going, walk back inside, as I said before, sit down with a cup of cocoa, sip on that. Oh, what time is it? Oh, 12 minutes? All right, I step back outside, see how he's doing? Oh, you still shooting? All right, bet. I go back inside, looking, looking at the stars from the inside of the house, because then, it's not cold and I'm not touching the camera. That's two, two bangs right there. Okay, so to wrap things up, I'm gonna say all my notes here again. First things first, you gotta fly. You gotta go to Finland, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, Northern countries, that's the only place you can get Northern lights. Northern countries in the Arctic Circle. Exactly. That's an important note. It's tough, it's <laughs> tough. Like it's really, really hard to get these things. That's why it's so magical. That's why it's so elusive. Be patient. You can't get it on the first night, that's okay. Also, be ready to move on the fly. If you need to drive 20 minutes that way. 40, oh, is it going off again? Nope. No. <laughs> oh, dang it. If I really to wanted to, it's just dry out here. Yeah. If you need to drive 20 minutes that way, 40 minutes that way, that's okay. Be patient and you will get the shots that you want for the Northern Lights. You need an Aurora tracker to see where you need to drive. And you also need a moon tracker and a star tracker to see what the sky is looking like so you're pointing in the right direction. For the settings, you need to, unfortunately, you need to play with your settings. Set your ISO as low as you can, your aperture as low as you can, and your shutter speed will do the rest and balance the others out. Play with your settings and you'll be able to figure it out. Lastly, warm clothes. Snuggle up. You see this? Layers. I got layers on layers. If I zip this down, I could come out, I'm fine. I still got layers underneath, you know what I'm saying? Layers on layers. Layers will keep you warm. And finally, the most important tip, get that timer. You don't want to shake your camera, you want to make sure you're getting crispy shots, so a timer is going to help you do that. Thank you so much for watching, I hope this helped. If you're going to the north right now, send me your bangers, I'd like to see your shots. And I'm sorry that this is muffled, I can't help it, it's cold out here! Thank you for subscribing, I'm going to keep standing for hours waiting for these northern lights to pop up. Subscribe! Alright, like the video, bye!